Hello. So in this video, I'm going to be speaking directly to anybody who wants to be a voice actor, a narrator, or somebody who wants to do voice work for audiobooks. Now, I want to start by saying that I'm an author, and the way I'm talking to you today is not going to be teaching you how to do what you need to do. Although some parts of that might play into what I say, it'll make sense. I'm not going to tell you how to upload audio files or create a profile for us authors to find. Mostly because of the fact I'm not a narrator, I have no plans to do any narration, even though I do this. <laughs> But I want to directly assess what do we, the authors, look for. When we go on ACX and maybe even find a way voices, I've never used them before. But if we go on other websites like that, what do we look at? So first off, when you go into the ACX and you're browsing for narrators, you get a whole list from genre, gender, language, accent, compensation, vocal style, voice age, location, and whether it's Audible approved or not. I don't know if they have this exact same layout on Find Away Voices or any other sites, but I'm just going by what ACX has. Now, ACX, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a platform created by Amazon and Audible to make audiobooks. So if you publish through KDP, you can use ACX and it's a lot quicker to just transfer your book over. That's going to be coming into the author video, which I'll be putting out pretty much around the same time as this video. So let's move into it. So uh, us authors, we'll go through, we'll pick, you know, maybe our genre or maybe we want, let's say, a female voice. OK, and we will select, you know, gender, which will bring up a sub menu and it'll say male or female. We'll click female, which I'm pretty sure you already know. But then we get a whole list of, in my case, I have so many examples here which show me all the possible candidates of what I want. Now, first thing I want to address here is if you are a male voice actor, make sure you're clicking that because there has been several times where I'm looking for a female voice actor and I get some male voice actors samples and then i go to the profile and i see that it's a picture of a man but it doesn't say male or female so make sure you're putting in your gender i know maybe that limits you to but you know it's gonna show how honest you are and that's gonna be one of the first things The next thing I want to point out is when we click play, first off, I've had, I don't know about other authors, but I listen to so many samples a day. And I'd say three fourths out of the samples I listen to have very, very poor quality. Either, Either there's, there's too, too much, much echo, echo on, on the mic, mic, the volume is way too low. I, you know, when I listen to a sample, I try to listen to it as, do I want to hear this person read a book? Do I want to devote so much of my time hearing this person tell me a story? If you're very quiet, if your sample is quiet... The author may not pick you because we don't 
some authors might, and they might, you know, send you a message saying, can you be louder? Some people have no problem being straight up or rude even. But most of the time, we're just probably going to skip over people who are too quiet. Also, make sure that, you know, you put in the titles, you know, I've seen some people do this, and I've seen others who didn't. Some people address that they use sound effects or SFX. And that's good. If you have sound effects, make sure to put that in the title of the clip. Because some people, like myself, I go looking for those people. Also, if you are doing a duo Meaning you are a female, but you have a co-worker that is a partner or something that is a male who's going to read the male parts. Then, you know, make sure male and female performers are in that clip title. And that's basically, you know, some of the biggest things. You know, check your volume. Make sure you're putting as much information in the clip title. Make sure that, you know, honestly, as I read a lot of these, I'll see, oh, it's from this book. It's a clip from this book or a clip from this movie or this book written by this person. Honestly, I'm not looking at it to be sold a book. I'm looking at it to be sold a narration. And that's what I want to say today. If you are a voice actor, if you are trying to get into this business, then make sure your clip is perfect. Check the echoes. Make sure it's at a loud enough volume. Make sure you clearly say what you're trying to say and you're reading clearly. Like I said, I've heard some that sound like they're on the other side of a football stadium. And it's like, looking at this clip, he's reading Frankenstein. But he sounds like he's 100 miles away from his mic. You know, that doesn't sound too good. It doesn't make it sound authentic to that time. It just doesn't sound good. I'm going to skip over it. Or if... You are very old or Western, and you have a deep Southern accent. Make sure you can actually do accents because I've heard somewhere, you know, someone's trying to do an accent, and it just either it comes off silly or it comes off as not good. Also, I guess, too, if you change your mind about your compensation. This is one thing that has kind of irritated me with a lot of the people I've talked with is, you know, a lot of people put down that they will accept royalty share, but that they also would like so much per finished hour. So if you and then I contact these people. And I say, hey, would you be interested in doing this for royalty share? And they say, no, I don't do royalty share, but it's like, but it's on your profile. You know, I'm not, I don't say that to them. I'm just like, okay, thank you for your time. Bye. But I look at their profile and I'm like, yeah, I'm never going to talk to this person again because, you know, they weren't honest on their profile. Make sure your profile stays up to date. If you change your mind and you're like, oh, no, I don't want to do royalty shares. You know, that's fine. Some people can afford to pay, you know, the per finished hour and not a problem. Then change that on your profile because that's what we authors, we're going to be looking at what we can afford. What can we afford to pay this person? What can we afford to do? And if we can't afford you, well, then you should make sure that we know that. Before we even type you a message. Just make sure your profile is up to date. Make sure your clips are good. That's all I have to say to narrators. Who are trying to get into this business. And for those who are new. 
if you have already created a profile with ACX, I'm going to be honest with you. There were some that I heard that I was really interested in. But honestly, it's because, you know, I've gotten myself, I've received auditions for audiobooks. And I didn't have the heart to tell these people no, simply because their mic quality was too poor. Their audio was very low. Or they just didn't do a good job at reading. And I guess the last thing I can say to people hoping to get into this, if you're going to audition for a book or anything on here, if you're going to take the time, we authors, we have to upload something that we are looking forward to hearing. For example, I took a section from, I believe, two parts of my very first book, The Guardian of Light. And I took two sections of that book, from one from the beginning, one from the end, and I put it in the audition script. I wanted to hear what that sounded like. And the person who... I've had multiple people, actually, who have auditioned for short stories but did not read the whole thing. They read part of it. They read half of it. Or they don't read, you know, that thing at all. And they just... I had one person send me a clip, which I already heard on their profile. And it's like, yeah, I've heard this. I want to hear what else you can do. That's what we look for. That's what we need to hear. So if you audition, then please audition with the audition script that we provide if we're providing you one. Because we're giving you that for a reason. And we're only allowed to give like, I think it's like three to four pages. So, you know, we're putting in, yeah, as much as we can fit into that three or four pages, but we're doing it so we can hear how you perform different roles, different characters on the fly. So if you only do part of it, you're not going to win points with the author, probably. There might be nice authors out there that will. I know back when I started, I was... You know, I basically signed with the first person I came across. I, I knew there was probably mistakes, but I just said yes to everything because I was super excited to get my book turned into an audio book. And it didn't turn out well. I mean, it was, it was good, but it could have been better. And it should have been better. And I have learned a lot since then so and before i go i just want to make one quick addition if you are a voice actor and you really are looking to break into this business royalty share is not always a bad idea sometimes it can be a good idea if you're working on a series and you're new you are going to get paid as part of that and the more books and stuff you do in that series, the more money you can make. And with that said, I have to also state and add that you need a social media presence. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, any place you can, even TikTok. Because if you have a social media presence and you're working on an audiobook, you cannot just leave the selling of the audiobook up to the writer. You have to take part of selling that audiobook as well. You have to go out there and promote it to family, friends, and anybody who you've connected with on social media. And that is everything I have for narrators. These are the best tips I can give you 
that we the writers look for when hiring a narrator. Now, if you have found this helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel and make sure to click that notification bell so you are notified the second a new video goes up. I want to thank you all for watching and I will talk to you next time.